Hi guys, welcome back to the Player YouTube channel. And you join me today with the answer to many a man's question when he reaches his midlife crisis. What do you do? Well, to be honest, there's a few choices as my wife gave me. She said we could buy a caravan. Uh, yeah, right. Or we could go on a round the world trip. Mm, yeah, maybe. Mm. Or go and get a mistress. Mm, definitely, I like that idea. But then the one most practical one of all was, why don't you go out and just buy yourself a really nice car? So I did. This is the 595 Arbath Scorpion Oro. It's one of 2,000. I want to show you around it. I want to show you how much fun and how many smiles per minute this car can give you because it's an absolute pocket rocket. It's incredible. Let's take a look around it. Let's get under the bonnet. Let's get it out on the road and give our evaluation of this car from our bath. So under the bonnet, you get a 1.4 litre four-cylinder T-Jet engine. And this develops around about 165 brake horsepower. And that's achieved using a little Garrett turbo, which is housed over here. The whole thing is incredible the way it's put together. This particular car comes with a manual five-speed gearbox, but you can get a robotized sequential gearbox as well. But I love the manual in this car. It's incredibly compact. I wouldn't want to work on it, but there again, I get someone to do that for me. Round at the back, it's got some great little bits and pieces. I really love this big spoiler on the top here. You've got the tinted glass all the way around the back as well, which is great in the summer as well, keeps it a bit cooler. It is a little bit 500e, Fiat 500e here, but of course it is because that's what this car is based on. But it's nothing like a Fiat 500, trust me. That's a, a DLGC as we affectionately call them, a daddy's little girl's car. This is a big boy's car, trust me, it really is. Um, you get the lovely twin exhaust down here. You also get these beautiful Scorpion Oro badge here and the 595 gold badge here. I just think the whole thing is just really quite sexy actually. Let's have a look inside because the one thing that I wanted to make sure when I had this little midlife crisis was that I could still help out with going doing the shopping run or maybe, you know, if you've still got kids at college or something or uni, you can go and pick them and their mates up in the back here. So this car, again, doesn't disappoint. It's got plenty of room in the back here. In actual fact, it's also got the cutest parcel shelf in the world. Now, normally I throw these stupid things away because they really have no relevance. And this one, especially, does not have a relevance. <laughs> it's completely useless. It's just really cute but I'm not going to throw it away because it's cute. I love it. Um, you can put the seats down. They're 50-50 split in the back here. There's a little lever around here. You can reach it from the back. Just push down like that and I'll do the other one for you as well because I want to show you that is plenty of room. Tons and tons of room. You are going to get four wheels in there. Get where I'm going here. Follow me with this. Keep going with me. Four wheels, yeah, with slicks on. Oh yeah. Or you could have wets on, of course, depends on the weekend. You're going to get your race suit in there. You're going to get a trolley jack across the back here. And you're going to get your race helmet in here as well. What have you got? The absolute ultimate open pit lane car. Look at it. It is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Um, you do get, well, it's in this car, you get a Beats Audio. So it's got a massive, great subwoofer in the back there, which is really nice. But, you know, this stupid latex rubbish, it's just throw it away, invest an extra 100 pounds, 100 UK pounds, and get yourself a space saver. Chuck the Beats out the window, because you'd have to, because you can't put the, the big base in there. And just, you know, enjoy the sound of the car, because that's what this car's all about. You'll see that when we get it out on the road. It's incredible. Right, so one thing I did say, I said it's very practical, and you still do the shopping and pick up the, you know, the kids from college or whatever. Let's check that out and see how much practicality there is for the passengers. Okay, let's check it out in the back. As I said, I think this car is very practical. I love this, this the actual material in here as well. It's very easy to keep clean. Um, checking it, well, look, yeah, it's not going to work unless I put the little headrests up which you pop up like that that's better and do you know what I mean apart from perhaps a little bit of headroom if you've got you know people in the back here who are over six foot or you know best part of two meters tall 1.79 meters I think you're going to be fine and even then they can slide down a little bit because there's plenty of leg room here I'm going to put the seat back this is uh this is in the driving position there it is tight I mean you can have to squeeze your legs apart a little bit but what do you expect? It's not designed for four people, really. It's just to pick you up from the pub job or give you a quick lift home in the evening. So, yeah, you've got little armrests on the side here. It's just really comfy. There's no amenities. There's no double... Well, there is a double cup holder, but there's no double um, USB, which I was looking for. Again, though, you've got that in the front. And on that note, let's go and have a look in the front, see what it's like for the driver. Right, so here we are, up front and out on the road 
in the Arbath 595 Scorpione Oro. And if you're wondering what that means, Scorpione is obviously scorpion and Oro means gold. So golden scorpion. Although this car is primarily black, it does have a lot of gold bits on it. It reminds me a little bit, I don't know about you guys watching, but it does remind me a little bit of the John Player special days of Formula One with James Hunt when he used to drive that lovely black car with the, the gold stripes down the side and the gold lettering and everything. And I really feel this car sort of captures that, I don't know, a little bit of nostalgic you know, feeling about it as well. And also inside here, I know, I know you're going to say it's a Fiat 500. It is a Fiat 500 up front and it's a Fiat 500 with some decent seats, a decent steering wheel, because it's not the same steering wheel, that's for sure. And it's definitely not got a boost gauge, a turbo gauge, as I like to call it, and a sport button. Aha, see? The only thing, obviously, you need a donor car for these things. Otherwise, it would just cost way too much money just to have a whole car just dedicated to the Abarth one. This is just perfect. They've taken a 500 and put it on steroids. And that's why it's, this car cannot be classed as a 500. It's not a DLGC, as I call it, a daddy's little girl's car. This is a big boy's car because it really is. And it's, it's fueled my little midlife crisis no end. Trust me. I've had so many smiles per minute out of this car. It's ridiculous. Let's talk brass tacks, as we say over here in the UK. First up, yes, I know, it has got a Fiat 500 dashboard fascia, whatever you want to call it up here. But it's got a few extra bits and pieces. You've still got that really decent seven inch screen at the front there. It's right in your face. It's really easy to use. Lovely TFT touch screen there. Um, You've got your TomTom -tom nav on there as well. You've got your Beats media in this as well. So you've got all your sounds coming through. Fantastic subwoofer in the back. The whole surround system really works. I love the sound in this car. You've got DAB radio as standard. You've obviously got your Bluetooth and you've got your other bits and pieces. Your connectivity is all there, guys. It's very modern. So although you've got this sort of very retro look about this car on the inside, it's very, very Tech, it's technologically, get my words out, technologically advanced. It's way up there with the rest of them. And that goes for that digital speedo readout and everything here, this digital, digital cluster. Um, I really love this. And it's fully adjustable using, on the end of the wiper stalk here, there's a button here. And you can scroll through the menu like that. It gives you your trips. It gives you your range. It will give you your tyre pressures. It will also give you your current mileage that you get. We are currently getting 36.8 to the gallon. There you go. I think that's pretty reasonable for a four-cylinder TJ engine. It's not bad at all. Um, and I just love the whole look of it. And when you push that, you know, sport button, turn that to, not only does the car lift itself up a bit, you get that sort of throughput, you get the baffles open, the whole car just slightly feels looser, which is really, really lovely. Um, and this, this whole little instrument cluster here goes red uh, with a little red checkered flag in the background. It's so cool. I really like that. <laughs> little things like that. So nice indeed. The rest of it, yes. Okay, so we've got the aircon down here. We've got our fog light buttons up here. All pretty much standard like the Fiat 500. Big 500 badge over there. You've got your windows in the center, windows up and down. Don't forget that. If you go for a test drive, don't make yourself look silly like someone I know who went, oh, where's the window button? Uh, in the middle, sir. Ah, yes, of course it is. Of course it is. I am just a mere motoring journalist. Why would I not know that? Anyway, disregarding that, um, I love the position of the gearbox. This is the manual. There is a robotized sequential automatic gearbox available as well. Sounds like, sounds like something out of Star Wars or Star Trek. No, robotized sequential auto gearbox. Um, basically, it's an auto gearbox with paddles. I love, I think if you're going to buy one of these, get yourself the manual. Do a bit of work for a change, especially if you're out on track, you're having a pit lane, open pit lane day. You know, this car just loves to be driven. And I, as much as I like paddles, I've always been a manual man. Love a bit of manual gearbox. Clutch on this, super sensitive, really like it. It's really tight as well. Um, you, there's, there's plenty of bite there, but it will just let rip at the, the best of times. It's really good. It will allow you to launch this car. Um, 0 to 60 time is just over seven seconds and top speed's around about 135 miles an hour, um, which is enough for a car like this, trust me. It's an out and track, you know, you can make full use of that power. That little Garrett turbo, you know, absolutely whistling away there, pushing that engine as hard as it can, that little 1.4 four-cylinder 
um, and, it, and it all comes together in just one lovely package. Suspension-wise, yes, it's firm. Of course it's firm. It's in our bath. That's what it was designed to be. Um, it's not going to drive like a Fiat 500. You're going to be wallowing all over the place. And you know, it's so comfortable in here, isn't it? I don't want it to be comfortable. I want it to be bouncy. I want to feel like I'm having to work to keep this car on the road. But at the same time, I want to feel the surety of this car. I want to feel this car go into a bend and I know I'm going to come out the other side with plenty of grip. I think a lot of that is the tyres on this car are really, really good. Um, also, the, the actual suspension system that runs on the Arbath, they've, they've designed it. I don't quite understand, I'm not an engineer, but the way the engineers explained it to me, this car almost pivots on itself as it turns in. Um, and how it does it, I have no idea, but it's wonderful and it works. So whatever it is, it really works and it works very well. Brakes are superb on this car. You can get upgradable things like brakes, you can get Brembo brakes put on it, you get sports suspension put on it. Then you're starting to jump into Competizione territory, which is the next one up to this one. Um, and then your price obviously goes up. Price, let's talk a bit of price. So price wise, Entry level 595, we are talking under 20,000 UK pounds. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Get a three year unlimited mileage warranty. You get an easy care service plan package with that as well. Roadside assistance and all for under 20,000. Now that would be your first rung on the ladder. And then you can add to that. You could buy yourself, you know, a, a record Monza exhaust, for example, or the uh, Akrapovich exhaust. You can start adding those bits in. You can get the Brembo brakes, you can start adding and then you start to creep up in the price. So, hence, if you want to go in at a different level or even on a special edition like this car, and it tells you it's a special edition, it's got a little badge here in the middle, it says it's one of 2,000. This is, as I said, the Scorpione Oro. There are a couple of different special edition cars. Have a look on the Abarth website, it's fantastic. And they've got a configurator on there where you can play for hours with different colors and all different things. You will absolutely love it, trust me. It's a really good place to go before you go down to meet your salesperson and have a test drive of one of these cars. Um, so I was talking price, so entry level under 20,000. Um, a car like this, these limited special editions, you know, they're sort of from around 22 to 23,000 upwards. And then if you do want a Competizione, you are talking 23,000 and above. And an average for one of those will be around 26,000 because you will go for some extra bits and pieces. It's got the bigger engine, well not bigger engine, same engine, but the bigger brake horsepower. It's 180, whereas this one, as you know, is 165. Um, to be honest, I think this car is a fantastic car, but being one of only 2,000, you probably find it very difficult to get hold of one. Um, that, like I say, there are other limited editions. A um, couple of other bits just to mention on this, you've got auto lights on it, you've got a decent steering, the steering wheel isn't, as I say, it's not a five, Fiat 500 steering wheel, this is an above steering wheel. Um, you've got the little top dead centre there, you've got a nice sort of flat bottom to it as well. I always claim it's in Italy, they drive like that with their knee. <laughs> I won't do it here in the UK, it's totally illegal. Um, on the right here, you've got your telephone on and off, you've got a media scroll here, up and down, this is very much like the Fiat 500. On the left here, you've got the mute button and you've got the volume up and down button, and then you've got your ask a bath button at the bottom there, which you can ask a bit like Siri, you can say tune into Radio 2 or whatever when, when you push it, and it'll do whatever you pre programmed it to do. Um, decent sized glove box, apart from the fact that there is this massive owner's manual. Oh, come on, a bath, you know, you're good at this. We don't read this. If you buy one of these cars, you're not going to read this, you're going to go straight on the internet, you're going to look up you know, on YouTube or something if there is a problem, or we're going to call you because it's under warranty. So do away with that and give us a nice space saver wheel in the back or something. I think that would be a lot handier than having this book. And it would free up a load of space inside the glove box, wouldn't it? Um, which would allow you to put extra pack of tissues in there for when you take passengers out for a joyride. If you get my drift. Not a joyride, a fun ride. Yeah, it's the same sort of thing. <laughs> you get where I'm going with that. Um, yeah, it's, it's just one of those cars that you, I, I was going to say, when you go down to test drive one of these, um, you know, it's a bit like going around to a friend whose dog's just had puppies. Don't go there, because you know you're coming home with a puppy. You just know you will, you will. I know, <laughs> I've done it myself. Um, you know, you've just got to bear that in mind, that these cars are very, 
you, they become part of you. They, they've got a soul, they've got a character. It's Italiano, it's Italian car. It's just something about it, it just eats at you and you just want to get in it and drive it and, and people really love them. When you're in, in driving them, you know, I was in London a few days ago, I'm driving through town, it's a lovely day, the window's down, I've got people coming up next to me, love the car, wow, what's that? Doesn't look like a Fiat 500, you know, people who weren't aware of a bath, and you just generally get a really lovely feeling from people. And that's what this car does brilliantly, absolutely brilliantly. It makes, it puts smiles on your face and it just makes driving it a pure pleasure. It's practical, it's reasonably economical, it's a very fair price to buy one as a second car or your midlife crisis. What more could you want? A bath? Thanks, it's amazing. So there you have it guys, that was my little midlife crisis car, or that is, should I say, the Arbath 595 Scorpion Oro. What a car, absolutely love doing that video, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, don't forget, if you've got any comments or any questions, just leave them in the box down below and one of the team will get back to you in due course. Also, if you could give us a nice thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. The reason is, we don't get paid any extra, we don't get any bonuses or anything, but what we do get, the whole team and me, we get a big pat on the back from the bosses and the sponsors, which means we can continue to bring you these types of videos and show you lovely cars and boats and all sorts of things. And speaking of all sorts of things. One thing I also want to mention to you is the player is not just a YouTube channel. No, and you can get something for free. You can get an online men's bookazine. It's got 228 pages of everything us guys love from cars, boats, to holidays, to golf, to lovely food and wine, and even places you can take your wife to, for example, on your round the world trip. If you want to sign up for that, all you've got to do is go to www.theplayer.co.uk. Hang on one second, it's coming in there now. I'll leave it up for a few seconds so you can memorize it. If you go there, you just need to put your name in and your email. That is it. And then you can either look at it online because the bods that do it all make sure you can turn it with your fingers or your mouse, or you can actually download it and view it at your leisure. It's thoroughly worth it because it's got loads of midlife crisis big boys toys in there as well, which I absolutely love, as you can imagine. Thanks for watching, guys. I shall catch you next week with something a bit different. In the meantime, to lock up my midlife crisis present and head off to meet the mistress.